If you want to learn how to make interactive GUI buttons, make sure to stay until the end of the video to find out how to do it. And before the video starts, check out my Patreon, link in the description, for other models. So we are here in the studio, and I will leave this main module script inside the description so you can grab it for yourself. But before we actually look inside of this, I will show you how I created these GUIs and the local script. So first of all, I have client sounds folder installed the start of the GUI. Now, of course, this is optional. If you don't want your GUI to have sounds when you hover over them or click on them, then this is not really necessary. But if you do, just create a folder, rename it however you want, and then insert all the client sounds inside of it. After that, you will create a screen GUI. So you can just click on the plus and then insert a new screen GUI. And inside of it, you can insert a local script and also a frame. So this frame, it's basically just for the resizing purposes. So as you can see, if I lower the background transparency, you can see that it's covering all the screen. And inside of this main, I have two folders and you don't actually really need to do this, but for my games, I do prefer to keep things inside the folders so it's easier to access and know where everything is. So first one I have is panels. It has these like uh, actual GUIs. I mean, they don't really do anything. It's just for the showcase that the scripts work. And the other one is called player profile, which has this buttons frame. Again, this is another frame so you can see where it is. And if I open it up, it has three buttons and it also has a UI list layout. And what this does, it's basically just to make like a list. And if I duplicate one of the buttons, you can see that it shifts to the right, creating a list. And these are my settings. So I have padding on 0.7 and of course it's on the scale, not on the offset. And you can even uh, change this. So for example, horizontal alignment. So I put it down below so the center is good. But if you have it like, I don't know, here to the left of the screen, you can put it on the left. So all the buttons will be shifted to the left. So you can kind of play around with these settings if you want. But now I will move on to some other things. So inside of each button, I have a key. And if I enable visibility, you can see that it's just for the shortcut. So if I press in my game R, then I will start building or doing whatever it needs to do. And this is not necessary, you can follow this system without actually having this. And I will even show you how to remove the part of the script that enables this. So yeah, you can see that each button inside has a key text label, just so the players know what the shortcut is when they hover over the button. And I also have like titles for each button, just so it's easier to know what exactly they do. And I also insert a UI corner, and it has its radius on the scale, so 0.3. And I also have some other settings such as UI aspect ratio, UI gradient, UI stroke, and all those things just to give it a bit more of a style. Now moving on to the local script, you can rename it if you want. Inside of it, let me just resize a bit so it's easier to see for you. So we have a local main frame, which is actually this frame, so script.parent.main. And I assume you obviously know the basic scripting when it comes to this. Then we have buttons frame, which is just uh, this frame that I just showed you, so main frame dot player profile which is this folder and then buttons frame now we have a table here called buttons relation and if you don't know how to actually create a table so let's just do local table equals and then you make these like brackets i'm not sure actually what you call them and inside i have like again uh, for each thing inside the table i have these brackets and then i did buttons frame dot build button which is uh, this one so it's this button and I put equal to mainframe.panels.craftingframe. So basically each of these buttons is linked to an exact frame inside the panel. And there's another thing. So let's just say you need uh, a button to actually do something else other than opening a frame. You can actually just do, I don't know, open. So basically just to write a string like this, or you can really say anything you want. And then inside of the main script, you can like change it. So if it has a string called open, then it does something else. And actually just for the purpose of showing this off, I will keep this as it is. So we have a string open. Then of course we need to require this module, which is again inside the replicated storage. And again, you can actually get the model in the link in the description. So we do local hover twin equals require, and we need to actually require uh, the module when we are using any module. Then game dot replicate storage dot hover twin, and then we just do hover twin dot start. And inside of this, you need to put the actual buttons relation table. And why am I using a module script for this? Is just because if you have like another script that you also want to tween the buttons or something like that, then you can just use this one module instead of repeating the code in each of the scripts. 
Now let's have a look in the Hover Twin module. So at the start we have Twin Service, then we have a Hover Twin Info, so we do twininfo.new, and these are just the settings for the Twin. I have a separate video on exactly how to Twin things, so if any of this code isn't exactly making sense to you, you can go check out that video. Then of course we get the player, we get the client sounds I talked about earlier. Then we have an empty table, which is Hover Twin, which is basically just every time you make a new module, so I will new module, it comes by default with local module equals empty table and then return module so you don't really need to worry about that and then we have function hover twin which is the name of the module and then dot start and inside of this i put buttons relations which is actually just the thing that we send and then for each button and link frame in pairs buttons relation and then we do something which if the button is a text button or an image button and if you don't have a button but something like a frame or something like that then you can just add a or statement to this if statement and then for example or if it's a like a frame or a canvas group or something else like that and we hover over it then it does something so first of all we have local end size which is button dot size so it's basically a default size of the button as we made it in the studio then we have a gold size which is the button size and then plus a slightly larger size so we use udim2.new and then I put 0 0.050, 0, 0, 0, 0.050, and yes, I'm using a scale for this, and if you don't know the difference between a scale and the offset, so each of the GUI elements has a scale or an offset size, and basically, if you're using a offset, such as this one, I'm using offset for this one, I'm really not sure why, but basically, offset will kind of make it weird, so if I enable this, and then we go to test, and you can see that if I test this, it's kind of weird. And if I use one of the plugins to convert it to the scale, and if I test now, it's the proper size, except this uh, one thing inside of it. If you want to know more about that, I have a video exactly for that, explaining the difference between offset and scale, and how you can actually convert it to. Next thing we have is a local hover twin. So this is basically the first uh, twin we need. So twin service, colon create. Inside we put the button that will twin, a hover twin info and then you do all these brackets and then you do these brackets and then inside of them you put the size equal to gold size and this down below is basically the exact same thing uh, just it's for like twinning uh, backwards so we have size equal to end size so basically it just comes back to the uh, default size I also mentioned that each of the buttons has UI corner, which I also uh, made it so it's twins. So basically when you hover over a button, if you remember at the start of the video, the UI corner actually expands. So here we have the twin and then we just set the corner radius to udim.new and then you can put 0.1 and then for the like default one or when it's twinning out you can put the 0.3 which is actually what we have here. And then these are just the two sounds I have. And then when you do a button dot mouse center, so this is like when it enters in the button when it's hovering over it, we can do corner twin in play, hover twin play, and then if the button and button find for child key, so this is the thing that I mentioned before, if you don't want your buttons to have like this key thing, which again just helps the player know the shortcut on their keyboard, then you can literally just delete this statement and leave it as it is. But I won't mind to have that, so I will leave it like this. And then of course hover sound play and now here we basically have the same thing just it's not mouse center but rather mouse sleeve so once that happens we connect it to a function and then we just use a different twin so corner twin out instead of twin in and then hover over twin and then we of course disable the visibility for the key now down here i have a button dot mouse button one click and then we connect it to a function again hover twin click sound and all of that so when we click the button now this might look a bit confusing, but trust me, it's not really. So if the linked frame, which is basically inside this local script again, so this is the linked frame. So anywhere where it says linked frame, it's basically the thing after the equal sign. So if it's an instance, and an instance is basically just a GUI element or an object, and we have also here and linked frame is a GUI object, then for each frame inside the buttons relation, and then if that frame is also an instance and also a GUI object, uh, frame.visible equals frame equal equal linked frame. So I know this might look kind of confusing, but what all of this does is just checks if the linked frame is an object and then it makes it either visible or invisible depending on if you already clicked it or not. And then if it's not, but if it's a string like we have an open here, then we can do, I don't know, I will just put print 
um, and then we can probably actually do link frame so it should actually print open and else I just did a warn unknown link frame type so I don't know if you write something wrong here or it doesn't exist it will just warn you and actually I just changed this part of the script just so it's more convenient and when you click on the button if you click on it again you can actually close the frame so your version should already have this now if I open output and click on this as you can see it prints out open because we put it in the table and if I click on this it opens up the index and if I click on this it opens up another screen GUI and we can seamlessly just transfer between these two. So that's it from this video, I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. If you did leave a like and subscribe and thanks for watching.